Hey guys, it's Kristen with Expert Credit Sweeps. So, I hope you are having a wonderful weekend so far. Now, this video is 100% about dispute reasons. So, let me ask you a question. What is the most important part of a dispute letter? It's the dispute reasons. So, for that reason, number one, there's this video, and number two, I have a series that's going to be completely about dispute reasons, all right? So what I'm gonna do is share my screen with you and show you a dispute progression that I made to kind of get those wheels turning on, you know, what to do with your dispute reasons because once again, dispute reasons are what get you the result. All right, so let me go and share my screen with you. Okay, so. I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things on here, and everything can basically go off of these seven things. So what I mean is we have collections, charge-offs, late payments, bankruptcies, judgments and tax liens, identity theft, and inquiries. All right, so you may be thinking, well, where are student loans? Where are foreclosures? Where are repossessions? Stuff like that. Everything can fit into this progression, right? Because um, you can get rid of charge-offs with late payments. You can get rid of student loans with late payments. You can get rid of uh, foreclosures and repossessions using the charge-off methods or late payments or even going via, you know, collections. So that's what I mean by everything can fit into these dispute reasons, all right? So let's start with collections. So what I did and you will clearly see this, is that we have under collections, it's going to be round one, two, three, four, five, and six, all right? Basically, what you wanna do is choose which one goes with whatever your um, you know, situation is, but this is just to get you start to start thinking about how to create your dispute reasons because it is so important, all right? And this is the way that I think when I'm creating my dispute letters. All right, so you first start with account is unknown. And your reason, just like this says right here, is removed for unknown collection. Now. If we pause real quick, I will tell you that if you want to get a copy of this, the link is going to be down in the description as well as at the end of the video, all right? So, account is unknown, reason is removed for unknown collection. Um, how did you verify this account? That is your next step, right? Because first you're saying it's unknown, they say, no, it's verified. Your next step is saying, well, how did you verify this? Like, where's the proof, right? So, I noticed that this account excuse me, I notified you that this account is unknown. How did you verify this account and where is the documentation that would prove it? You see how simple that is? So number one, unknown. Number two, verify. You get where this is going. All right, so method of collection verification. So what is the method that you use to verify this account? All right, so obviously the next one is proof of validation, okay? So furnish immediately the signed contract or remove this account. I'm going to have to make this a little bit bigger. All right, so uh, collector did not verify. So now you can say that you disputed with the collection agency. However, they didn't send you anything or maybe they sent you what, a bill or a statement. That is not legal validation and the account must be removed. So you need to let the bureaus know about that. Like, hey, I disputed with them, this is what they sent me, they didn't legally provide the, you know, the yada yada. So where is the documentation that you have that you were using to remove the account? So just as it says right here, the collector ignored my dispute letter, did not send me anything to verify this, and by not responding, agreed that this account is unverifiable, right? Isn't that called like a stopple by silence or something like that? Then you can go to section 609 if you would like. And there's a lot of other dispute reasons that you can use, obviously, such as, you know, there's on a collection, um, you know, late payments or a past due. There's all these other avenues that you can do, but this is just to get your wheels turning, like I mentioned. All right, so 609, use the 609. So this is how simple you want to do with it. You don't want to send them that long template. So section 609 states that you're required to send me the original paperwork that was that verifies this account. Otherwise, this is false information. You get what I'm saying? So let's go back to the top and go over to the next one. All right, charge-offs. Okay, so date of last activity. 
if you see blatant inaccuracies, you that's where you want to start, right? So normally, I see date of last activity being all over the place. So if it's a couple of days, don't bother. If it's a couple of months, eh, that's cool. If it's years, then definitely 100%, 1 million, kazillion, fazillion percent start with date of last activity, all right? So three different dates under date of last activity, remove immediately. And you can even put TransUnion as X, Experian as X, and Equifax as X, all right? If not, just keep it simple. So. Um, next one would be, how is this account accurate when the date of last activity shows three different dates? So first, you're saying date of last activity is incorrect and you're giving them, excuse me, giving them the information. They're going to come back and say it's verified. You're going to challenge that. How is this accurate when I'm seeing three different dates? You like, you're saying it's accurate, you're saying it's accurate, and you're saying it's accurate. How is that even freaking possible? Okay, so make sure to challenge that. Okay, method of verification, we already went over that. Uh, proof of validation, we already went over that. And then um, late payment after the charge off date, right? So when it was closed, there should not be any late payments after that date. And you just simply want to say remove immediately due to the fact that there are late payments after the closed date, or exactly what I had originally said that there shouldn't be any late payments after that account has been closed. All right, reporting, uh, excuse me, violation for continued reporting of late payments after charge off. You're in violation by continuing to report. And then we also have date of status. Now, there's a video on this if you want to go back and search for date of status. So the date of status shows that you didn't investigate this account. Remove immediately. So what that means is when you go and look at the account, let's say that you're looking on identity IQ. So it'll say date, um, date reported. So if you disputed it, and they came back and said it was verified, but they didn't change the date, then that obviously means that they did not investigate it and it has to be removed. All right, so proof of investigation or proof of independent, and there's supposed to be a T there, investigation. So send me the proof that you even did an investigation to begin with, all right? So you're saying that it's verified. Give me the proof because I'm still seeing that my original dispute um, you know, reason is still completely and totally inaccurate. And it doesn't even have to be the same dispute reason. It could just be that you're saying that it's um, accurate and that it's still not, right? Monthly payment on closed account. And this is in a lot of the videos. There should not be on any, any, any closed account, whether positive or negative, a monthly payment. Balance, now this is pretty general. Um, you could start with balance, you can end with balance, but if you're running out of reasons, you might want to use the balance thing. They can or cannot say that it's verified, but unless it's a blatant inaccuracy, don't start with balance. So um, that's why it's at the end and it's just an idea to use. So balance and past due. Wrong balance, wrong past due. Let's go back up to the top. And the next one is going to be late payments. All right, so I was never late. Please update this account because I was not late on insert date, all right? Now, however, if you are disputing, let's say that you're disputing an account that has um, three consecutive late payments, right? So it'll show that you were 90 days late, but you were currently on time or your client is currently on time. What you can do is choose the oldest late payment, dispute all three negatives, but you're only including the one. So what that means is, you're showing that you're late three months in a row, but you're only using that first month, right? But because they won't be able to verify that one, you're asking them to remove all of the late payments. Now, stop right here. If you have more than three late payments, don't even bother doing that because they're not gonna go and, you know, you know first thing you speak this one, and then they're gonna remove all of them, and then you have to go back in this one. Just don't bother with it. You might as well remove the entire account or just leave it alone, okay? If you have sporadic late payments, I mean, I guess you can try to dispute the oldest one, get all of them removed, but that's highly unlikely. So you really need to look at your account and decide what is best for you and for your credit. But what I do is, I first attempt to remove the late payments if that's not possible and it's not going to drop the credit score by removing the account, I will remove the entire account, okay? So you didn't verify this late payment. Obviously, you're challenging what they're saying. How did you verify the late payment? Um, 
provide bank records and proof of transactions, right? So sometimes I will say, you know, send me the copies of the bank transactions, bank records, receipts, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I will go as far as asking for the bank statement belonging to that company that proves when the client's uh, money was actually accepted into their account. They're not going to send this information, right? That is technically the only legal proof for a late payment. So that's what I'm saying with this, that you really need to just logically lay it out in your head and go after those dispute reasons that would go after this, right? So um, proof of investigation and then method of verification. And let's make this a little bit bigger. And the last one is proof of validation. Now I'm not going over those because we already did and they're all going to be the same, right? Okay, so let's go to, let's get rid of this one and we're gonna go to bankruptcy. So, because credit check total is now not really credit check total, it's now really just experience, we're not going to be you know, marking up those reports anymore because it doesn't show the information that we need. So, use Identity IQ. Now, you're not going to see the blatant inaccuracies on bankruptcies anymore. So now it's even more difficult to remove bankruptcies than it was before because you're not seeing Equifax reporting a date from like 2000 years ago. You may see, you know, a couple of days difference and that is still an inaccuracy, right? So you're going to have to choose your words very, very carefully. So normally I start with the court name because like Equifax will report federal, TransUnion will report federal district, and Experian will report uh, USBKPT court, you know, so on and so forth, city and state. That is inaccurate. It should literally say, spelled out, US bankruptcy court, city, state, right? So obviously, federal is not the name, federal district is not the name, and USBKPT, CT, is abbreviated, and that is not the name, right? So that's what I mean by uh, court name, so invalid court name. Filing date, and that is what we were just talking about, right? So the dates are slightly different, but it is a dispute reason. All right, so then you can go after the method of verification because obviously the court is not verifying with them. You do not need to get an affidavit from the court. Don't even bother with all that. Just do it this way. And then, you know, uh, the proof of validation and a copy of the petition, um, as well as verify, uh, excuse me, failure to verify, correct, or remove. And then um, section 603. So let me get this in a little bit. So section 603. Um, that basically states that you need to provide your permission for an account to report on your credit. Obviously, you are not giving anybody permission, not the court, not the judge, not your attorney, not the clerk, for them to put that on your credit report. So you can simply state that, um, you can say pursuant to if you want, or section 603 states if you want, but basically, I did not provide my permission for this account to report on my credit file, pursuant to section 603, you need to remove it immediately, right? All right, judgments and tax liens. Now, I will tell you that judgments and tax liens are actually very, very simple to remove, okay? So, um, filing date inconsistency, you will see this a lot, and we've already talked about how to uh, dispute that way. And then, ju uh, judgment court name, the court name is wrong, and you'll see that a lot with judgments, okay? Um, provide the documents, they're not going to. Wrong plaintiff, they might put, you know, instead of, uh, Jane Doe, they'll put, you know, Jane uh, Dunn or something like, you know, if it's inaccurate, just dispute it, okay? And then failure to provide the documents, proof of judgment investigation. So um, prove that this is even mine, prove that you did an investigation, prove the documents, wrong uh, filing date, you know, the wrong court name, these are also the wrong reference number, and then for bankruptcy, obviously, the docket number, so you have a lot to work with with these. Uh, just remember, they're very, very easy to remove. It's kind of funny, though, that bankruptcies are like the most difficult, and then judgments and taxings are like the easiest. So then we have identity theft, right? 
Now, I'm talking about actual valid identity theft. I'm not talking about you or some company illegally doing identity theft and illegally doing freaking police reports and stuff, right? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when someone goes and steals your information or, you know, they access it online or whatever and they're applying to stuff and that account really is not yours. That is what I'm talking about. So, number one, obviously is going to be not mine. Now, of course, you know, you need to do the police report, you need to do the affidavit. Um, that's pretty much common sense, so I, I didn't really go over that. So first thing is not mine. Proof of ownership. So I'm saying that it's not mine. You're saying that it is. So where is your proof, right? So we go step one, step two, step three, so on and so forth. So it's basically like a ladder. You're just going up those things, right? Now, remember what I was talking about in my previous video on uh, the dispute reasons, and this was literally my last video, that the formula is always the same. And you can think about this being the same way, that you're starting at step one. Now they're going to say something, right? Then you're going to go and challenge it, or you're going to ask for something else because it needs to be new and relevant information, okay? Proof of ownership. Uh, furnish documentation. So prove it and then furnish it. Um, and then you can dispute with the creditor and you can make complaints, uh, especially against the company as well. They're the ones that are going to be bothered by it. And then proof of investigation, proof of verification, proof of validation, and then violation. All right. And then lastly, we have inquiries. So this is an unknown inquiry that's very, very common. I mean, that's just common sense. You know, I don't know what this inquiry is. Uh, proof of signature, proof of inquiry verification, uh, creditor, you can dispute with the creditor on the inquiry. Bureau creditor didn't validate and you can go back to collections and it would be the same thing. I disputed with them, they didn't prove it and I need to lose it. Okay, so Bureau proof of validation illegal inquiries because they didn't verify or validate yet they are still reporting it and section 623 states that if an account or an inquiry really can be inaccurate then they cannot report it unless they actually have proof to the contrary so where is that proof so without it it is illegal all right so um then you can also make complaints to fpb ag bbb fgc and lastly you can use section 604 all right so if you want to access this and um, you want to be able to expand this and um, check this out for yourself, you can go and find this very, very simply at expertcreditsweeps.com slash store. And the link is going to be down in the description. All right. So that is it from Expert Credit Sweeps. But just like I mentioned, this is going to be a series on dispute reasons because why? Remember what I said at the beginning, the most important, the most important thing about your dispute letter and getting the results and being able to fight verified responses is your dispute reasons, all right? So I will make another dispute progression based on other information, other things that you want based on, on in the, um, excuse me, on the comments on this video. But for right now, that is it from Expert Credit Sweeps, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. See you guys later.